<laughs> the songs of the Philippines. Hi everybody, this is Angelo Quinones and you reach Shine Ministries. I am Ministries is Jay Shine. To give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's holy and inspired word, the Bible. And I tried to do a study yesterday, and I don't have my um, I am Ministry headquarters set up here in the Philippines. You know, it's just it's just it's just it's a separate office uh, set up specifically to to do uh, videos and, and audios and things like that. And debates and campaigns so i don't have that set up yet i've been in the philippines for three years and we got a lot done thank god praise the lord he, he gets the glory the lord jesus christ and uh but we don't got that set up yet so i'm sorry about the noise in the background and stuff like that it is early in the morning it's about like 5 30 in the morning something like that, to that effect so we've been dealing with the full greek construction um a series and in this series we're looking at different verses that pop up okay on occasion when you're speaking to uh, so-called they're not but so-called jehovah's witnesses okay meaning jehovah's witnesses they're not they're not and not okay so that's what we're doing now we're, we're dealing with full greek constructions or full hebrew constructions okay and i want to get into the latin actually of uh john 1 1 when we get back to john 1 1 because we took a little break from john 1 1 and the full greek construction of that that just amazing text you know the the greek is very simple very simple greek but it's very very deep uh, teachings that that you know um that uh that are uh in that in that text it's a progression of thought you know we were we were seeing that there is a progression of thought from uh, from a to b from b to c that not only did he subsist eternal eternally timelessly and continuously meaning logos or logos but he also existed with another person who we now know is God the Father. He wasn't God the Father at the time, according to Hebrews 1, 5, and 6, and 5, 5, and 7, 3. But um, nevertheless, he was with him in an intimate relationship, which I call intercommunion slash relationship. And then we saw that John 1, 1, C has to do with nature slash essence. So we're taking a break from John 1, 1, and we're heading up to, and we headed, actually, so that's I guess that's the Aris tense. We headed uh, to uh, to John 17:3 because that does pop up a, a lot of times. You know, even Muslims. Forget about JWs for now. Muslims use that. They don't even believe, okay, in the Bible. They don't. They believe in the Quran, even though it says, you know, we create it. What is this we business? If there's only one God, so what is this, this we in the Quran? Oh, but you know, we don't accept you know English translations, and you know, uh, you know, um, people. Who speak their language, uh, you know, made these translations and stuff like that, you know, and and, and it is in their uh, Bibles, you know, also this we business and stuff like that. But anyway, so a lot of groups, cults, and sects, they love to use, okay, or abuse John seventeen three to their own uh, propaganda, you know, propaganda and glory. And uh, so we're, we're looking at this text here, the full Greek construction of this, so we can know it. So we could uh, we could just you know drench it all in and actually uh, be very well equipped to to answer, okay these these people who are you know blinded by by sin and by their uh, group. Well, this is verse uh, three right over here, and it says something like this: How they de estin he ionias zoe he nagenosko se se tan manan alatenan te an. Uh, Han Apostelas Yesun Christan. There's a lot of accusative case constructions over here, which has to do with limitations, but I'm going to break down the cases, um, you know, for you in just a minute. Well, what, what can be said about this text? Well, let me just read it again. Okay, and this is, let's read it again over here. It says, Haute, not Alte, but Haute with an H sound, even though there's an, this is an A over there. But there's a there's a marker that will indicate to you that to put uh, that you have to put an H sound at the beginning of uh, of uh, this vowel. Okay. Sometimes it's pointed the other way, so you don't put any uh, aspiration, like in alte, right? Just letting you know. Like in the word n, you know uh, that preposition found and recorded in uh, John one one. Well, that's eh. But you see the word for one, which is actually a chad in, in uh, John chapter 10. Well, that uh, Greek word there that's found there in that text for one is hen. So you see the difference, ha, you know, hen and then n. You see the difference? 
it's just a little marker um, that either will look like an open quote or a closed quote. They're not. They'll open. It'll look like an op open quote or closed quote that 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 are above. They can be above a, a letter or in front of a letter. You know, mostly vowels, but in one case uh, also uh, in one uh, consonant like uh, ro, it does appear uh, there uh, also. Can appear. Was in the beginning of the what? Okay, now, um, so let's just read this again. It says, How te de estin? Hey, Ionias, Zoe, Hey, I conozco se, se, tan manan a la tenante an, Kai, Han, and then it says, Apestelas yasun cristan. Okay, so that's just the deal. Now, we, we saw in our last study that two words are described here. I say two words because I can't say two things because God is described here. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? Se. He's described. Uh, so we have se there, which is, there's no gender in, in second person personal pronouns. That's from the su, uh, paradigm, su, su, soy, se. Okay, it'll be like in English, uh, su, and it's uh, for the nominative, sou for the genitive, soi for the dative, and se, which we have right here, or, or uh, sigma epsilon for the accusative. Okay, and I'll break down the cases in in a second. But you know, God is described here. Okay, and then, but not only him, um, life is described as being this, as as existing, and 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 also. Um, and also that uh, life is eternal. Eternal life. That's not what I'm saying. Let me get to my spot here. I'll just roll up a little bit over here. Roll up the videotape. Okay, <laughs> like one of Wolf used to say. So it says over here, how te de estin. Now, first of all, I just want to say right off the bat that this is supported by P66. Okay. The oldest existing Gospel of John that we have does have this. Does it have the whole verse? No. You have to tell Je the Jehovah's Witnesses. And you, and you see this in a New Testament and Greek manuscript uh, book, uh, edited and arranged by Reuben Swanson and forwarded by the great Greek scholar Bruce and Metzger. He forwarded the book. And what it is, it's not, it's, it's, it's not like a sort of like an English book you know like you just sit down and you just it's just a book like for example uh uh jesus is god by murray j harris or something like that you know that they, they even though they have a, even though that has a lot of greek and, and hebrew in it but i'm saying it's not just a normal book that you read you know like let's say uh the invisible war by dr barnhouse or something like that or search of depression by uh martin lloyd jones or whatever the case may be any other book by any other great you know um uh bible teacher you know, um, you know. Let me illustrate by like Barnhouse again. You know what I mean? The Book of Romans, uh, study by uh, by uh, James Boyce. I mean, it's not it's not like that. It's in Greek, so you have to know your Greek. Well, what is it? Well, on each page, it has variant readings of each verse. What are you talking about? Like for example, John seventeen three. Now I don't have it in front of me. That's back in New York. Hopefully, it survived the flood in my brother's house because I moved here to the Philippines, like I said before. But when I had it, and, and actually I had, um, praise God, I had uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, uh, the Acts of the Apostles, Romans, uh, 1 Corinthians. I think I skipped uh, 2 Corinthians and headed over to uh, Galatians. So that's really the last one that I bought, Galatians, you know. But I, I don't know if he has, Reuben Swanson has every single book of the new testament all 27 books of the new testament and like books like philemon and first and second john i mean and third john you know alpha beta and gamma i mean i'll be on the same book it's just much too small just to have it in one volume you know so th that that would be you know like first second and and third john will be in one book and and you know small books like philemon i guess will be you know maybe uh with something else i mean i don't know how he has it like when it comes to those little tiny books like jude and stuff like that but but all i know that you have um you know gospel the gospel uh kata matayan lukan uh markan and yohanin you have those separately so for example when you go to john 17 3 you know on on, on that page of the book you're going to see, like, for example, let's say just put a number out there, 17 lines 
of variant readings. What do you mean variant readings? Well, I mean, there are, you know, thousands of Greek uh, manuscripts. And so what he did, um, he used, whenever possible, um, Vaticanus, or Manuscript B, um, also known as Manuscript uh, 03, as the, you know, as the, um, the head manuscript on the page, whenever possible. It doesn't have the, the pastorals. Pastoral epistles, you know, Vaticanus is incomplete. It's not like Sinaiticus that, that, that that's complete. But whenever possible, Vaticanus will be the head manuscript, Greek manuscript. And so um, then um, that'll be the first on the line, let's say. And then uh, it'll be something like Sinaiticus or Sinaiticus or, or, um, or uh, maybe uh, manuscript C. Uh, and manuscript C, I should say, um, and different, you know, manuscript L, which has the, the extra article in John 1, 1, uh, C. So, I mean, you, you have all these manuscripts. You have ancient manuscripts and, and um, you know, not so ancient manuscripts like uh, the Byzantine text. So, Incidentally, you can get the Byzantine text form of Greek New Testament by Pierpont. And it's another author, uh, 2005 version of a beautiful uh, Bible. Beautiful, uh, you know, it was, oh, you know, Byzantine text form, but it's still, this is a wonderful Bible to get. And you can have that and compare it with uh, United Bible Society's whatever edition, 4th edition, 5th edition, and your Tyndale House, uh, Greek New Testament, whatever the case may be, Nestle Allen. And Alfred Marshall's Greek Interlinear has the NIV and NASB in its pages. Wonderful uh, Interlinear. And so you can compare, especially when you're going against uh, King James only advocates, you know, and then and you want to see, oh, well, why isn't Jesus there? Well, it's, in, you know, it's, you know, this uh, Altos there, or Altu, or Ato, or Atan, you understand what I'm saying? You know, he, 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 okay, <laughs> or he, his, and uh, uh, him and him, right, to him, whatever the case may be, for the date of... So, there are manuscripts that support this, but, like I said before, P66 does not support the complete verse. It's the oldest existing Gospel of John that we have. It doesn't support it. Oh, it breaks off. Um, you know, it doesn't have God in here. The only true, and it breaks off, and it comes back. But you have to understand, you have to tell the witnesses, oh, the only true God. Yeah, I understand that. I agree. It was probably there. It was probably there. That's not the original, you know. Other manuscripts do have uh, the only true uh, God, Theon. And by the way, Theon is in the Anarchist state. There is no article, okay, in front, you know, which will be Tan, okay. Um, there's no article here. This is an Anarchist state, and yet this is the God of Israel, okay. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't say, you are, you are a true God. Why don't you be consistent as the witnesses? Um, as a witness, if you're a witness listening to me, uh, like John 1 1 C, and I already gave you that trap scenario that I gave uh, to Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay, let's say, and let's bring up John 1 1 in here. Okay, John 1 1 C. Let's say in Greek it says something like this, um, uh, Allah, but it means but you know, it's not the you know, it's not the God of the Muslims, but A L L A means but, but this, but that, you know, Alpha, Lambda, Lambda, Alpha, and uh, but. Uh, ha Lagos, right? Or uh, O Logos, or whatever you want to, you know, pronounce that. Um, uh, you could say Ain was not, and this is in the indicative, so you say U was not God. They asked. Now, to be consistent, if you're read like that, Trap the witnesses. They will have to put in their translations, but the logos, but the logos. So you could just say Kai, Kai, um, an. Okay, you could use just an. Kai, okay, Kai ha logos, an u theos. Okay, or if you want to stress the point, I mean, just do the same thing that the manuscripts do. You know, have you know, put the theos in the beginning. You, you know, increasing the volume, if you will, but on the opposite side. You know what I'm saying? In Greek, the more to the beginning of the sentence it is, the, the stronger, the stronger um, uh, the fact is that uh, Logos is deity in John 1 and C. That's what Julius Armanti said. So let's take that. 
Well, I mean, I just gave you the construction. Okay, I switch Allah to Kai. Okay, fine. And the word, okay, Kai Halagas, in was not U uh, God. They ask, U says the Trinitarian. Well, what are you saying? He is God. I know. And I'm a Trinitarian. I'm born again Trinitarian for 30 years. But you can trap the Jehovah's Witness like this. If it said that, it doesn't. But if it said that, well, then you're going to have to put in your translation, but the word was not a God. With a, with a small g. Was not a God. Okay? That's what you're going to have to put. You can't put, but the word was, uh, was not a God, capital G. Because why don't you have capital G in the text in the regular sense of it all? You know, see what I'm saying? See how you trap the witnesses like that? You can answer, you know, ask them that question. Well, Zoe, uh, Greek word Zoe, which is actually a Nartus here. Um, uh, Zoe is, right? Uh, that's the deal. That's an Arthur's. Uh, that now means life. Uh, Zeta, now they call Zeta. Omega, and then Eta, now they call Eta. <laughs> And it's actually in the middle of the screen to the left. Now, remember that you read a Greek from left to right, never from right to left, left, unless you're breaking up, uh, especially verbs, you're breaking up a verb, you're breaking it up to see, you know, the construction. You're not really reading it. You're just breaking it up. You know, you're parsing it, you know. And you're looking at the, the, the personal ending first. And I don't know why you would just do that. But you could do it the other way around. Or, like, just go all over the place and do that. But... If you want to read from right to left, you're not really reading the sentence. You know, you're just reading a particular uh, what, and you're going backwards, let's say. You know, you're going uh, from the personal ending, uh, like they say in stesetai, uh, okay, in uh, the, the Septuagint. And that's a good answer to give to the witnesses, you know, that's in the future. Okay, stesetai, you know, he will rise, whatever the case may be, he will stand. And so you look at Thai, personal ending there, and then... Uh, and then uh, then you're looking at the connecting vowel. I think that's epsilon over there. Uh, connecting vowel. Then you're looking at the future tense uh, formative uh, sigma. And so that's like will, actually, in, in, in Greek. They just use an S. And I, and I think they do because the letter in and of itself, it, all these letters mean something. Like alpha means rising, right? Uh, beta means like foundation of basis, you know? And then, uh, you know, like uh, gamma has to do with, like with the stem of a plant. It's just perfect for Genesis, you know, beginning, you know. And so, you know, beta means, um, or nowadays called fita, means divine, the first letter in, in God's, uh, uh, in, in the word for God. In and of itself, that, that letter means divine. Not that every single, per every single person that has a beta or fita in, the, in uh, his or her name that we're calling him divine or he is divine. No. Look, look at the context. You know, Thomas, that's the state. So what? He's not deity. You know, he's not, you know. So I, I understand that. But I'm just saying that in and of itself, all these letters mean something. Okay? And so um, so that's just it. In, in synchronize, you know, uh, sigma has to do with, with synchronize. So I, I think that's what that's why they used it. I'm just guessing, but I think that's why they used. Uh, that's a good guess. Um, you know, you could check out a book like maybe uh, Morphology. Um, and but there's a, there's also a book um, uh, by William D. Mouse. there's also a book uh, that has to do with uh, you know the names of the letters. Uh, you could get that on Amazon.com. I had a copy of that. Actually, have it in my cart. One of the just in case it didn't survive the flood. And by the way, I mean, I love Hugh Ross. I love Hugh Ross. I mean, just, just a brother in the Lord. A, a local flood, really? A local flood? That's why there's seashells on mountains. You know what I'm saying? A local flood. And that's why the ark rested on a mountain, you know, according to the, the, the satellite pictures and stuff like that. I mean, you, you got to be kidding, right? Just a local flood? Big deal. If it was a local flood, why you have to, you know, rescue all the animals? It's just a local flood. So how about the animals roaming around, you know, Australia or something like that, or somewhere like that? Why not just, you know, have them roam around, and you don't have to worry about, you know, the extinction of all animals. Why put animals in the ark if it was a local flood? You just import some animals from someplace else. It's ridiculous. 
Sometimes we, we try to be too smart for our own good. But, but I mean, you know, he was <laughs> almost impeccable. Okay, did you ever hear of um, the RVUFO uh, hypothesis? Uh, the, the residual uh, UFO um, uh, hypothesis. You know, that, that, that's that group of, um, you know, that, uh, of, of UFO uh, sightings that, that really nobody can explain, you know. So, not not IFOs or UFOs, but you know RFOs. You know, this is amazing. I mean, he did a great job there. But getting back to this though, um, there are two words here, okay, that are described. Okay, Zoe describes as being this. It's the first word, you know, in this text. It's a, it's a demonstrative pronoun um, from the, um, uh, you know, a Hautaus a paradigm. And uh, this is in the feminine. Okay, so this is specific, specifically in that side of the demonstrative par uh, paradigm. Now let me let me just let me before I get to this what. Let me say this. Let me remind you first of all, and getting back to the true God uh, statement that he that he uh, uh, gave. You know, Jesus gave this. This is nothing new that he what he did or said in his text. Okay, meaning he lifted us up his eyes to heaven. That's written in the Psalms. He said that the Father is a true God. Well, so what? It says that the Lord is a true um, God in Jeremiah chapter uh, 10, verse 10. Incidentally, Jehovah's Witnesses, so-called, I mean, they have, a, they have a problem. Because they designate Jesus as being the true um, Lord in verse 6 of chapter 8 of 1 Corinthians. Well, it says that the Lord is a true God in Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 10. What are you going to do about that? It's straight jacketed Jesus to be the only true Lord. So what? I could take that and use that to my own advantage. Just like I use your booklet entitled The Word Who Is He, written back in 19, you know, either in 1961 or 62, I use that to my advantage. Why? Well, I mean, uh, you say that, that Jesus didn't say Echek of himself, the divine title that's equal to the Tetragrammaton. It's just, you know, first person. Tetragrammaton is a third person. That's just the difference. There's no difference between the two uh, names, basically. I mean, meaning, you know, slightly. But... It's equal to the Tetragrammaton, but I don't want to get into that because I'm getting into a lot of things. But I use that because you, you said that Jesus spoke in the Hebrew of his day and not in Greek. Well, I could use that. I don't agree with it, but I could use that because I could pop out, you know, two New Testaments said Ted Denture, oh, ex Jehovah's Witness. And as a matter of fact, in, in the title of his book is Why I Left Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> it has some glorious chapters and a glorious page to boot. On page uh, 153, he pops out two Greek New Testaments, of, uh, of Hebrew New Testaments, I should say, rather, uh, published in 1817 and 1880. And I have the 1817 edition. You can get it on Amazon.com. It was um, translated from the Texas Receptus, which is a nice text. It's, it's, it's a nice Greek text and um, by, um, by Gigi Collier and T. Frey, F-R-E-Y and C-O-L-L-Y-E-R. And so they made a Hebrew New Testament. And in John chapter 8, verse uh, 58, Jesus said, Echek of himself. Well, nobody can say that. I'm saying this. Nobody can say that for himself. Nobody can use that for himself except Yahweh, except for Jehovah. Nobody can use that. I can say Ani. The blind man in uh, John chapter 9 said, Ani who? I am he. Who means he in Hebrew? You understand what I'm saying? Ani uh, means I am or I, you know, like that. I am he. He didn't say Echek, though. When they ask, are you that, are you that man? Yeah, I who? I am he. Right? He say Echek, though. They would have killed him right there. Not maybe in a temple. They would have waited <laughs> to stone him outside. But that's what Jesus said in the, the two Hebrew New Testaments that uh, Ted Densher, ex Jehovah's Witness, ex because Mark from Missouri, you know, uh, J.W. from uh, Missouri, a Republican state of all things. So that was that. Was that. <laughs> You know, he said that, uh, well, a lot of people are leaving the um, capital G God uh, scenario. A lot of Trinitarians are leaving that, and they're, they're, they're pushing over to our side. They're leaning over to our side. They ain't God side. Really? Really, it's just extra Jehovah's Witnesses all over the place. In 1975, when you get that false date and came, a whole bunch of Jehovah's Witnesses uh, left your ship. Okay? And became either atheist or committed suicide or, you know, became, uh, you know, born again. Whatever the case may be. Is that what I'm saying? But let's get back to this. Now, let me sh make sure I'm recording because it'll be a shame if I'm not. And I am, praise God. Now, let me just make sure um, also that this is sort of bright. 
Okay, because, let me see, and it is, I think, it's just it's okay, it's not that bad. Well, let's start off with demonstrative pronouns. Now, uh, what's, what's a pronoun? Well, a pronoun, it, in Latin, it means in place of a noun. So it's taking the place of a noun because of monotony. Repeating the same thing, one thing over and over again, you know. Angelo uh, woke up. Angelo took a bath. Angelo, you know, uh, put on his clothes. Angelo went outside to the store. Angelo came back. It's too many Angelos. So to break up the, the monotony of repeating the same, you know, uh, thing. I mean, pronouns were invented. Okay. So in Greek, you got first person personal pronouns. Ego mou moi me, right? Or the emphatics, you know. Like uh, I, my, uh, me and me, right? To me or, or me and me. Okay. And then you have the second person personal pronouns, you know, you, your, you, and you, right? To you is what the date of, you know. Oh, you have third person personal pronouns, you know, I'll toss. I'll toss, I'll to, I'll to, I'll ton, I'll toy, I'll ton, I'll toy, I'll, I'll to, you know, and then you have the feminine, and you have the nerdy. Okay. I'll tie with an Omicron, I'll tie with an uh, Alpha, like that, you know, I'll Tay, you know, it's just like this, but this is, it's not, it's not how Tay, it's I'll Tay, though. So you have third person personal pronouns. Well, third person personal pronouns uh, means, it could mean he, she, or it, right? You know, I'll toss for, um, for he, and I'll Tay for, for her, and then, um, I'll ta, uh, can mean it, right? And but getting to the demonstrative pronouns, okay. Well, you have, um, you have two of them. You have, um, you have um, how toss, right? Okay, or actually, uh, who toss though? Who toss, right? Who toss and uh, how they, okay. So you have you um, and uh, I'm sorry, uh, you, you know, uh, I'll tell you meaning the uh, the feminine, but you have uh, hutas and ekenas. Okay, there's a lot of people speaking and throwing my concentration. Hutas and ekenas. Well, hutas means can mean okay, all right, this or these. Ekenas can uh, can mean hello, fun. Can mean that or those. You know, I mean. Just pause this for a second. My wife woke up. And that was just my wife that I was, I was giving a hug to because uh, we're going through a tough time with, with our baby, you know. And so she just got off and I just gave her a hug in the kitchen. Because I'm in the kitchen right now. So um, our baby is doing better. Our baby's name is Anna Devane. And I got that uh, name from General Hospital. <laughs> Anna Devane, the WSB uh, agent. Um... Uh, police commissioner, you know, along with Robert Scorpio and Sean Donnelly. I, I don't know how somebody can call their, their son Frisco, though. I mean, it's just, you know, that's a little bit too much, you know what I'm saying? It's just like calling him Blackie, you know, like a, like it's just like a punk rock star, you know, you know, before Frisco, you know, or like, uh, I guess Leo, you know, call Leo, you know, Jimmy Lee. <laughs> I wouldn't call her the name, but anyway, oh my God, those guys. You know, we lost Sean Donnelly actually this year, 2021. Uh, that was my favorite character of all TV shows except for the Six Million Dollar Man, though. But I just given my wife a hug, so I'm sorry about that, guys. I'm back. Now, I was talking about the demonstrative pronouns, and the, the pronoun means in place of a noun. Okay, now, now, you know, you yeah, who toss and a canos. Okay, who toss and a canos. And so, who toss can be used, okay, in, in, our, in this case, uh, how to can be used as a head noun but it also can be used as an adjective describing a noun this is describing okay zoe what zoe is okay there are three words um that are doing that and one of them is not even an adjective one of them is just a, 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 a verb esten in the third person and how to uh means this okay this remember that i said that that hutans means this well this is feminine hutans means this okay um how te means uh this okay but this is feminine okay because zoe is feminine so it's gonna match gender okay and number by the way okay 
so that's just it so the thing is that um uh, so you have hutas meaning this and akenas means that you have separate rules for not straight jacket straight jacketed rules but you know separate rules for the both okay you know um you know uh the rule of hutas is that it takes the, the the nearest antecedent the rule of akenas uh, is that it takes the re most remote antecedent. An antecedent is an, an ancestor of a pronoun. It's an ancestor. Okay. Now, um, so, so you have your demonstrative pronouns. I mean, you have your first person personal pronouns, you know, for example, I, you have, and in the plural, you have also the plural of, of, you know, I, we say we in English. And so you have your second person personal pronouns, you know, uh, like you, and then you have the plural forms of those in, in Greek, you know, specific ones. Humes. Humon, humin, humas, okay? And so you have third person personal pronouns, altas, which is, this is not, okay? And so he, uh, she, it, or and, and in the plural, you know, they, you know what I mean? So... But then you have this one as the monster to pronoun, okay, from the Hutas paradigm. So this means this, and the Kanos, which is not here, means that, okay. That is what he said, or whatever the case may be, a Kanos. This is salvation, Hutas. This is salvation, Hutas, this. That is the way it is okay <laughs> it's just like a elvis presley a movie uh that, that's the way it is i think that's a, it is from the 1970s that's the way it is okay so you have your demonstrative pronouns and then you have your relative pronouns and you have one of them here also a relative small uh, pronouns are, are you know are uh, small and uh you know uh words and so you have one, uh, and I'll, I'll be talking about it when we get to it. But but uh, how to is a demonstrative pronoun, okay? And it means this right over here. And uh, in certain instances, you can you can translate that in, into uh, this one, if you will, right? And so this is just this is acting as an adjective. This is not the head noun. How to. You know what I'm saying? Let me just get that in um, also in English for you guys here. Okay, hopefully I got it to John 17, 3. Hopefully that's queued up there. Okay, so it's not at 3, but that's okay. Well, it says over here this, and it has how to, but you say that's just an A. Where's the H? Well, that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. That above the U or the Upsilon, now they called Epsilon. There's like an open open quote. Well, that's not an open quote. That's a that's a breathing marker. Okay. Now it looks like a, if it looks like an open quote, you are to put an H sound in the beginning. Okay, of this what? I hope that's not my baby uh, crying. Okay. No, that's somebody else outside. It's kids all over the place. So this is how te and not how te. Okay, there's a big difference because, you know, um, alte will be the uh, third person personal pronoun. Haute will be the demonstrative pronoun. Okay, so this, you know, there is a difference. There is a difference. So that's just the deal. So, um, so let's get back to this and, and teach from the Greek itself. Okay. Um, let's see over here, and three is right over here, and three is right there, on the top. Now remember I said that you read uh, Greek from left to right, like you read Latin, like you read Spanish, like you read uh, Filipino, you know, Tagalog, Sabuano, whatever you want to call it, and like you read um, French, okay, all, all those languages you read from left to right. Uh, it's Hebrew and Aramaic. I mean, you read from from right to left. It's um, Shemitic uh, languages, you know. So, demonstrative pronouns you have uh, Hutas and Akenas. Uh, uh, Hutas meaning um, 
this or uh, these, and it can also means that or those. Okay, so let's move on. So this. Now, that's just a deal. Now, de, okay, is a post positive. You see it very clearly there. It's like a de anyway. Is it in the middle of the, let me put it in the middle of the, of the phone. The de, well, that's a post positive. I mean, you translate that first in your translation. It's, it comes second here in the Greek. Um, and it has several meanings, and uh, you can translate that as now. Okay, so. Um, So that's uh, delta and epsilon, and uh, then you have your verb. Now, I already said that Zoe, life is being described, and it's being described as existing, as being, Esten. Now, Esten is spelled out epsilon, sigma, tau, iota, nu. The nu, and I'm in the middle of the screen, all the way to the, to the right-hand side. Uh, where you see, you can see that it, a sort of E, S, T, I, and then you have a V-looking letter, which is not a V in, in, in Greek. It is a N, okay? It is a N like in Nancy, okay? So if you're looking at a V-looking letter, okay, I have to be careful when I say that because, you know, the capital Upsilon looks a little bit like a V. It looks like a Y, but it looks like a V it could throw you off. But when you're looking at a, a letter that's small that looks like a V, well, then you're looking at the, the N in, in Greek, a nu. Now it's called ni, but it's the same thing, you know. These names have different, um, the names of the letters um, in modern Greek, uh, some of them can be different, um, meaning just the name, how you say it, you know, uh, can, be, can be different. And mo for the most part, it doesn't change the sound. For the most part, it doesn't change the sound. I mean... When you come to uh, beta, nowadays it's called vita, it does change the sound because now it's a, nowadays it's V. But in biblical Greek, there is no V, okay? You know what I'm saying? There is no W, okay, in, 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 in Greek, in biblical Greek. So, estin means is. It's a to be verb from the Amy uh, paradigm, right? And... It is merely saying that Zoe is existing. It is. And the thing is that um, this is a verb, but it's describing uh, Zoe. So you have two words um, right off the bat that are describing, okay, Zoe, life, Zoe. Um, bio was not used, which means life. It was not used. It also means life. Bio, okay, you get biology, stuff like that, you know, so I'm not saying the study of all living things. But uh, Zoe was employed, and it's being described so far by two words. Okay, haute, meaning this. Okay, so this is describing life. Okay, and then is, or estin, is also describing life, but it's not an adjective, it is a, uh, it is a uh, verb. Okay. A verb, just like in manual Greek grammar, the or the Greek New Testament by Mansi and Adena comes to mind. It, it, this comes to my mind that uh, they use tree is. Well, a tree has to do with designation, and then um, and then um, and then um, and then that the is there is the predicate. Okay. Or, you can say designation and assertion. Designation has to do with the noun, tree. Assertion has to do about something said about that noun, okay, is. So, designation and assertion or subject and predicate. Subject being uh, the noun, predicate being the, um, uh, the verb. Okay, so... Two things are describing Zoe. Let's go on here and see if something else is describing Zoe. Now, over here, it has, okay, uh, hey, it's an article, feminine article from the, you know, the ha uh, uh, ta side of the paradigm. Incidentally, like I said before, this is very important. There is no indefinite article paradigm in biblical Greek. There is one, okay, enas, uh, mia, ana, in, and the rest of them in um, modern Greek. 
you have indefinite articles, but there is no such thing as an indefinite article paradigm in biblical Greek. You could tell that to the witnesses. So this idea of a God in John 1, see, there is no a God there. There is no, it doesn't say a God. You know what I'm saying? And there are words that are not even used there in John 1, 1. Tina is not used in John 1, 1, B. For this sort of you know adoration uh, that Lagos had for uh, 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 Theos, Tina, like Tina Turner, you know what I want to say with the weird hair. <laughs> That's not there. Allah is not there. But he wasn't God. You know that wasn't there. I already gave you a scenario for the witness if, if that was there, sort of you know. But it's not there, Allah. And then haste, which means one. That's not there. So a whole bunch of words. Getting back to John 1 1 again, it doesn't even say in Arche Epoyas and Hate Aztan Lagan anywhere in the Bible, especially in John 1 1 A. I say especially because that's the focus of Jehovah's Witnesses and, and you know, uh, att attacking us. Not that there, but John 1 1 C is their main focus. No. It doesn't say in the beginning God created Lagos. It doesn't even say it in Hebrew. Okay, in the Hebrew uh, New Testament. So, okay, Behreshit. Bara Elohim Hatabah. It doesn't say in the beginning God created. What? It doesn't say that anywhere. It doesn't even say in the beginning the word emerged. And Arche Egeneto or Egeneta um, uh, Halagas. It doesn't say in the beginning was the sun. We could deal with that if it was there, but it doesn't even say that. And Arche in Hahuyas. It doesn't say in the beginning was the angel, though we could deal with that. Because, you know, um, the Apostle Paul in Hebrew, in the Hebrew New Testament of 1817, in the book of Ephesim, the book of Ephesians, he calls himself Malach there. He's a Malach. Okay? He's not, he wasn't an angelic creature flying all over the joint. You understand what I'm saying? By the way, it says in verse 16 of chapter 22 of Revelation, I, Jesus, have sent my angel. It's not that I am an angel. Okay? I am an angel, uh, 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 ego Amy, uh, Angelas. You know, doesn't say that. It says, you know, I sent, Pempo, I sent my angel to the churches. In the plural there, churches. Is that what I'm saying? And then it, it gives you a nature uh, one and nature two, or nature A and nature B, there in a nutshell, uh, him being uh, the. Um, the the Hriza, uh, the root of uh, David, and the Genas, the offspring. See how the two natures come into play. Sometimes it's is is in reverse, like in Romans chapter one verses three and four is in reverse. Nature two is first, and nature one is second in verse four. You understand know what I'm saying? You know, took hold of the seed of David. Well, that's nature. That's nature two, but it's it's, it's put there up in in your face. Okay, in verse three. But for the most part, it's really, you know, uh, nature one and nature two, like that, in order. And uh, it does that with the Trinity as well, the Bible, you know. It's not just, you know, God the Father first all the time, no. No, the Holy Spirit sometimes is first, okay. Read, you know, passages like, uh, you know, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 14, oh, 13, verse 14, and uh, like that, that's... Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4, 5, and 6. Ephesians chapter uh, 4, verses 4, 5, and 6. You know, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. You see the Trinity, I mean, in different order. It's not rank. It's just, it's just preference. Focus. This is no, this is no, 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 you know, first class. This is, this is not Jehovah's Witnesses. You know, we're dealing with, we're dealing with the Trinity. We're not dealing with, with the anointed class and the other sheep and all that other mumbo jumbo that you can't even take communion. I mean, come on, stop. Not that at all. I'll take the Estin and then hey Ionios. Well, Ionios there, okay, means eternal. Incidentally, okay, when you're talking about um. And let's go here, let's kill uh, several buds with one stone. I mean, it's just like, you know, it's like Ricochet Rabbit all over again. You ever heard, you ever saw that uh, uh, show, Ricochet Rabbit? He had a pistol and he's jumping all over the place. Always coming back. And Drupalon had that pistol that, 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 that melted, you know, and the bullet goes like, like in slow motion or something like that to the ground or to the floor. It's insane. It's crazy. All right, so let's get to... Um, 
Let's get to uh, the book of Matthew. You know where I'm going. The book of Matthew uh, chapter. All right. Let's see here. The book of Matthew. My magnifying glass is foggy. Let me just clean that up with my shirt. And that's just a deal. <clears throat> and so let's go to uh, chapter 25 and verse in the last verse. All right. Incidentally, verse 41 tells you that the uh, fire is prepared. The same Greek word for prepare is the same Greek word found and recorded in verse 6, where, you know, uh, the, you know, um, you know, that he prepared a place for us Christians. So it's the same, same what? You understand what I'm saying? Now, um, it says over here in the NASB, a dependable Bible, these will go. Okay, these will go. So it's for a future tense there. These will uh, go away into eternal uh, punishment, but their H's into eternal life. So it says over here, go away into eternal punishment. It doesn't say eternal cutting off. This is cutting off over here in the Greek. You understand what I'm saying? A colossan there specifically. And uh, that means discipline or punishment. Okay, there's, there's no cutting off. No cutting off at all. You know, um, Samuel was disturbed. Okay, even though he was in punishment, but he was disturbed. Okay, his soul was very much alive. This is just this, this idea where Jesus poured out his soul unto death. Uh, his soul was destroyed. It was not. Same Hebrew word, ara. Okay, I think that's Aleph, uh, uh, Resh, and then He. Same uh, Hebrew word, Ara, is found and recorded in Genesis. We just saw Genesis right there. Probably, I don't know if I had it there. Uh, Genesis um, chapter um, 24, verse 20, where the water from Rebekah's jar was poured out. Same Hebrew word, Ara. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? Just look at Brown, Brown Driver and Briggs, uh, Hebrew uh, lexicon, one of the greatest Hebrew lexicons I've ever seen in the world. I mean, it's, just, it's telling you right there that, that Adah is being used, and, and, and the water wasn't destroyed at all, and it was used for, to give drink to the camels. Okay? <laughs> That's just a deal. Well, we're not dealing with that. We'll deal with uh, eternal punishment and fire and tacha in another um, study. Okay, so that just gave you a little uh, a foretaste of that. Now, let's return to the text, though. Okay, so it says over here, haute, which means this. De means uh, now. And then estin, um, uh, de has a semantic range, you know. And then uh, estin means is. Okay, is a to be what? Okay, this, now this is what? Well, another adjective is being used to describe Zoe. Okay, Ionios. And that's feminine. You know what I'm saying? So you got a whole bunch of feminine words over here. I mean, Halte is feminine. Okay, means this. And then um, Ionios is feminine. Has an article there. Hey, that's feminine. Okay. And then you have Zoe. That's feminine. That has no article, but that's feminine. Okay. So you, all, you have all these uh, words there. And Ionios is spelled out Alpha Iota. Okay, it's not how Onios because it's the, the marker is pointing the other way now. It's point. It's point. It's like a, a close quote, if you will, it's sort of uh, symbol. But but it's not. It's not a close quote. But it looks like that. When it, when it has a close quote above uh, uh, a diphthong, a diphthong is a combination of two vowels, like in the word eight, e i g h t one two three four five six seven eight. Well, then, in Greek, you have combinations of vowels like that, okay? And then uh, they're blending together to make one sound. And then when you see that, um, when you see that marker, you just pronounce it like that, you know. Uh, put an H sound in the beginning of the, of the word, okay? Um, like in the Greek word, uh, hadas, which means way, you know? And that's just it. So, Ionios uh, means eternal. So, eternal is describing, okay, Zoe. This is describing Zoe. And Estin, a to be verb, is describing Zoe. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? So, Zoe is being described here in this passage. So, you know, eternal life exists. Jesus says so. It is, exists. 
And I think that Murray, uh, um, not Murray, uh, uh, I think the, um, what is her name, the, the, that, that atheist that ran around, um, um, you know, 1960s, I forgot her name, um, the one that was killed in 1995 by three people, um, along with her um, granddaughter and one of her sons, actually, they were kidnapped and, 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 and taken and, and, and uh, tortured and, and killed and their bodies were burned. Um, oh, Madeline O'Hara. Yeah, the one that went against Walter Martin in 1968 on the John Neville program. That's a thing to to behold um, at the bait and campaign. But you, you can only mouth off against God for you know, just several years. There's always an end to these, these atheists, you know. And then the one that replaced her, I don't know if she's there now, but the one that replaced her tries to be like her, but she looks like a, you know, a kindergarten teacher, you know. Not, nothing against kindergarten teachers, I'm just saying. Like she, she, she doesn't sound like her at all. She sounds like a, a first grade teacher or something like that, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of stupid, you know, sound, trying to sound like Madeline O'Hara. Well, there's only one Madeline O'Hara, and she was snuffed out, you know. As soon as she popped in, and don't give me this this excuse. Oh, you know, her mother never loved her, never mother never wanted her. Because there's a lot of people that, you know, um, my mother wasn't loved, okay, when she was small by her mom. And she didn't uh, grow up to 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 hate God and to snuff uh, prayer out of school and stuff like that. I mean, you know, it's just an excuse. I don't want to hear that though. You know what I mean? I don't want to hear that. That, that, that woman was an intelligent woman. She knew what she was doing, or the devil knew what he was doing through her. But this is not about Madeline O'Hara. But if you want to see a study of Madeline O'Hara's history, I mean, it's just, you can see it on YouTube. You know, how she came on the scene in the 1960s like a typhoon and went out like a, like a, like a blackout. Well, after Zoe, after the word life, you have henna there. Now, what's this all about? Uh, henna. Uh, it says over here, this, uh, now this is life eternal. Okay, that, so the henna is translated into that in this text. Henna is spelled out. Iota, nu. Remember the V is not a, looking letter is not a V, it's an N, like a Nancy. There also is uh, an N in Hebrew, but it's called noon, like good afternoon. N O O N. This is nu, N U, right? And then you have the the alpha, so it's really henna. Now again, you make the H sound when the marker. See the marker is like an open quote now, okay? I'm at the middle of the screen, and it's like a I V A looking word, but it's really I N A. Well, I mean, you you have a a, a marker. It's like an open quote uh, right above the, the eye, the iota. Well, when you see that position, you see that, that the, 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 it's like open to the right-hand side. You know, it's like an open quote. Well, then it, was a op it looks like an opposite side apostrophe, right? Well, then you have your A sounding uh, sound in the beginning of the word. So you don't say inna, you say henna. Okay, now, this henna is actually a clue Okay, one of the clues that are subjunctive, okay, uh, is in this text. And henna, just to say it like this, is a clue that a subjunctive is coming up. <laughs> okay, I guess that's the Greek P when I say it like that, you know. <laughs> now, what is the word? Well, over here is, the word coming up is se. I wish it was gnosko sin. Because the se is right after that, so it rolls better where genosko sin se, not genosko se se. That's kind of that's kind of rough. Some manuscripts and some apps do have genosko sin, the n at the end of this word for 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 no. They may know. Well, you know, it, it's just better genosko sin se to me. To me, it's just better like that. You know, that new movable. I wish it didn't move. I. I uh, out the way, I wish it was right there, so I could say "genosco sense tam anana like that like that instead of "genosco sense." It's very hard to say "genosco sense." "Genosco se" and then "se." "Se" uh, 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 means you. The "you" is right after this. "Se" that's easy, but "genosco sense" that's kind of rough. Uh, that they that is in a may know. 
they may know. So this is a subjunctive, um, and, and the reason I am putting my voice like that is because you know there's a lot of cults and sects uh, around the world. I mean, and there's another one called the King Change Only Advocates. And they're the ones who say that the NIV has uh, Jesus less than the, you know, the NIV that I have. I don't know about the new one, the, 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 the old one, has Jesus more. By count of 1,241 to 971, it's not even close. It's a count of 270 more times that the NIV has Jesus found. Even though the Greek is only a nine, 917 times, but that's beside the point. Incidentally, Mary, I like to say this, is only found as not only her, you know, for the 27 times. Only 27 times in the Greek New Testament. And Basilisa doesn't accompany Mary anywhere. Queen. It doesn't. Okay. Get that Greek word from, um, uh, I believe, uh, it's in a chapter 12. We get that from a lot of places. But chapter 12. Um, it talks about the blasphemy of the Holy uh, uh, Spirit. and But then it talks about other things. It talks about um, Queen, Queen, uh, you know, uh, the queen, Basilisa. Well, that, the Greek word Basilisa is not found for, for Mary anywhere. And, and they could say, yeah, it's only 27 times that Mary is found, but how about the, the, the Alte and, and stuff like that? How about that? Well, yeah, but you could say the same thing for Jesus. Alta, you know, Altas is found a lot of times for him. So as the number rises for uh, Mary, it rises for Jesus. Okay? <laughs> Just to add the song, Never Gonna Be Like Jesus. I mean, you know, it's a, a song by Audio Adrenaline. You know, that, that famous rock group, you know, is it never going to be like Jesus. Never going to hold the world in my hand. But, you know, Catholics, you know, have uh, Mary holding the world in her hand. That's what I'm saying. Uh, so over here, uh, that, okay, um, Ginosko said, may know. That's a subjunctive um, uh, word. It's a, it's a subjunctive uh, verb. It, it's a... It's, is different the mood this this subjunctive is different from the indicative why well the indicative you see it in John 1 1 you know um, you know it's just, it's just in the beginning was a what and that doesn't in the indicative mood that's that's the mood of projected reality okay but this is the mood of possibility or probability okay so, it's not that eternal life may exist. That, in other words, that it, it, it might be out there. It's not saying that. It's not saying that at all. And this idea that, you know, the, the um, I was going to say the witnesses, but it's just as bad. You know, Jeho you know um, the King James Holy Advocates, they say, well, um, you know, in John 3.16, I mean, they have should there in the NASB and NIV. I mean, should, it should be, you know. Should have, or whatever the case may be. This is a subjunctive over there. It's a subjunctive. And whenever you see a subjunctive, I mean, should and may and might, I mean, can be good translations. Okay? Along with the verb. It, it, it can be a good translation. As a matter of fact, if you see in the King James, um, yes, yeah, subjunctives are all over the place over here on verse one or two, and they translate that into to might and stuff like that in the King James. Okay, let me let me give you an indication. Okay, let's go to the King James. I like the King James. This is a great Bible. I love the King James. It's not the point. Uh, let's get there. Um, by the way, Easter in uh, verse four, chapter twelve of uh, Acts of the Apostles. You know, they heard the voice. They didn't hear. They, they didn't hear the voice. Contradiction, found and recorded in Acts of the Apostles. Only Acts of the Apostles, chapter nine, verse seven, and chapter twenty-two, verse nine. I mean, come on. NASB and NIV clean that mistake up by the King James. I, they knew the kids of case uh, limitation theory. They were using it all over the place. They translated the case of the case. It's not like they didn't translate it uh, ever in, in the King James. But anyway, let's um, see here. Genesis is just poke the bear here and, and change that. And let's go to um, what I was dealing with. Um, 
I guess that's a King James only curse, so you know the memory goes out. <laughs> It's just like if you have a code, that'd be the King James curse also, you know what I'm saying? They dimed on Martin Luther for, uh, dimed on Martin Luther and, and Calvin. I mean, it, it, it's amazing. You know, Ripplinger was hanging up curtains and stuff like that, and people were reading Martin Lloyd-Jones books, you know. I mean, she has a scholarship from, uh, from uh, you know, interior designing. And then when she's interviewed in these, uh, you know, radio or uh, television programs, oh, she has all these degrees from this and this, and, but it has nothing to do with the Bible. It has to do with interior designing. So what, what good are the degrees? You know? Curtains don't teach you how to, you know, uh, teach the Word of God or know the Word of God like that. You know what I'm saying? All right. So, um... I wanted to go to um, John's Gospel. You see, memory did come back. They probably dined witch and, and complained about uh, Dan Wallace, who forgot his Greek, and they probably called that the King James only cares. He forgot all his Greek, and then it came back again. I mean, goodness gracious, it was just amazing, amazing stuff with Dan Wallace. You know, one of the great Greek scholars of the of the of the Christian Church. Where are the scholars, great Greek scholars, uh, by the way, uh, or Bible teachers in, in uh, Jehovah's Witness camp? I mean, I don't, I don't see them, you know. Well, let's go to King, King, the, the King James. It says over here, these words spake a Jesus. By the way, it doesn't say hi, Jesus, over there, okay, in the Greek. And I knew the New World Translation didn't say a hey, Jesus. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't say hi, Jesus. You know what I'm saying? And lifted, uh, it lifted up his eyes, okay, to heaven, and um, said, there's probably a Greek word, apen, and a Greek over there, Father, pater, the hour uh, is come. Glorify thy, ay, 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 glorify thy son, that thy son, probably hinder there, also, okay, may glorify thee. That's what's done to there in Greek. May. You know what I'm and they have may here. What, is he not going to glorify the, the, the Father just because it has may there? Let's go to verse 2. As uh, thou has given him, meaning, uh, he's speaking in third person over here, a power over all flesh. Greek word sarks, no doubt, over there. Flesh. That he should get what is this should give eternal life to as many as a thou has given him wait a minute we caught you right there you say should that's a subjunctive over there he should give that's a subjunctive you don't believe me let's go let's, let's check my greek out Okay, first of all, let's see it first in, in this Greek, uh, without the training wheels, let's check that out, and verse 2, okay, let's see where I'm at over here, and that's just the deal, I think that's in verse 2, so it's like a, it's like uh one of these dedokin words, okay, dedokas. The the omega is pointing out the 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 um the um the subjunctive in his word over here. Omega, it's pointing out. Now um, let's check this out because I just want to see I want to see something over here. Um, edokas uh, given. Uh, uh, to him, it says over here, a uh, power exosia, exosion, okay, uh, passes, that's all, okay, sarcasm, and that's my baby crying, I better go, guys, Sarkas, uh that, upon all, uh, and I better go, I better go, guys, I have to go, this is, this is such a shame, well, I can pause it, actually, I could just pause it, let me see, I could just pause it, because my baby's crying, so I have to go, guys, sorry about that, let me just pause it over here. I'm either going to pause it or stop completely um, cold turkey. So I was just going to catch you guys. God bless you if I let this study go. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Um, give me a thumbs up, a comment on the screen. Let me know what you, what you want to see. Let me know what you thought of the study. 
and I'll be right with you or I'll let you go, okay? That's Anna Devane crying over there. Okay, bye. Bye, guys. So, I'm back, guys, because <laughs> my baby um, was crying, and I almost immediately have to, really immediately, but I had a Bible study, so I had to let you guys go, you know, in a decent way. Uh, she, not that she experienced it now, but she's experienced, um, you know, some medical uh, issues. And so the thing is that, you know, I had to tend to her, you know, right away. You know, she's only a year and 10 months, so I'm, I really deeply apologize for that, you know what I mean? Hopefully some of you guys are still with me. So, um, you know, we, this is a full reconstruction. And the reason why I want you guys to know this stuff, okay, you don't have to. It's not like you have to know. But the, um, it's good to know because that way you know every inch and square of this verse. And not really theologically speaking. I mean, it's too deep for tears. Okay. We'll never get at the, at the end of what things really mean. If any man uh, thinks that he knows something, he does not know it yet as he ought to know. You know. So um, the thing is, that, but we can't know something about it. We can't know uh, what, is, what is teaching. What it's teaching is that eternal life is both knowing the Father and the Son. But it can, can also be teaching that, um, that Jesus also is the true God along with uh, who we now know as the Father, God the Father. Because the thing is that the Lord is the true God anyway in Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 10. Let's check that out. Let's check that out. Let's go to um, the NASB. Okay. It's just a very easy app to get to, you know, and uh, to use. So I like to use it. And also, this is very accurate translation. It's not the name like the new world. <laughs> just a distortion. So let's, let's get to uh, Jeremiah. Okay, right here. It's right here. Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 10. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? And it says over here. Hello. It says over here. What's the reference, my love? <laughs> no, no more. Uh? No more. Uh, butter? No, 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 no. Some more. It was a little tiny thing. It, it lasted for a few days, you know. So anyway, it says over here. Um, da, 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 da. It says, but the Lord is the true God. So it says over here. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses have a problem because they say that you know they designate the Father as being God only. Because it says he, he's the only true God there. I mean, uh, there's only one God, the Father. So what? He's not the Lord? So, and then the Tetragrammaton has nothing to do with the Father if you, if, you, if you jump into that scenario. Okay? And then for me, um, Jesus being the only Lord there, only, it's not true, but only, just Lord without being God, well, that's also okay with me because then the Shema has to do with Jesus. Okay? Shema Israel, the Lord your God is one Lord. Okay? Uh, so there's, there's no skin off my nose, like they say. You know what I'm saying? It says I win tells you lose if you're a witness. You know what I'm saying? Either the Father is the true God uh, in that text of uh, John 17 3, or the Father and the Son are the true God. Okay? Together. And it's no skin off my nose. <laughs> it's almost like plastic surgery. No skin off my nose in First John chapter 5, verse 20. Because either the Father is the true God there, or Jesus is the true God. The both are said, okay, um, uh, the both are designated as the true God anyway, okay, in the Bible. You know, it's just like the maid from uh, the honeymooners, you know. You know, I have a job anyway, you know, like that, you know. So, let me just grab some coffee that you may have. Thanks a lot, my love. Oh, you're going to go to, uh, you want me to go with you? No, no. Huh? You going, you going with Mary? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, okay, so my, uh, it says over here, but the Lord is the true God. So, I mean, it's no skin off my nose, like I said before, if you designate Jesus as the Lord, only Lord, you know. This is, this is his eye when tells you lose as a witness. This is this double-headed coin, double-tail coin, whatever the case may be. <clears throat> 
So we saw the meaning of haute. There's a demonstrative pronoun meaning this is describing life, and then de can be translated uh, uh, is to be translated first now, and then is is a verb estin third person from the Amy paradigm. So you know Zoe is right, just like tree is right, and then hey Ionios, okay, um, okay. So, um, Heonios, uh, the eternal. Okay, but really eternal. It's just as an adjective there. Okay. Substantible adjective, I believe. It's a substantible adjective there describing, okay, Zoe. And so that's just the deal. And so then we have Zoe, and Zoe is describing Zoe. Okay. <laughs> and we discuss uh, Henna, and Henna is, uh, is, um, is a clue that a subjunctive is coming up. Okay. That's just a clue. The main clue is embedded in the verb itself. Just the stem, uh, the left ending connecting vowel, which is a, a dead giveaway. Okay? You know what I'm saying? Genosko se. I wish it was Genosko sin se, but anyway, some manuscripts have it, some, some manuscripts don't. Okay, so Genosko, I'll just say Genosko sin se, just to, you know, that's what I'm going to do from now on. Genosko sin se, tam, anonymity, like that, because it's very easy, like that, you know? And say we, we saw that it's a you know second person personal pronoun from the su uh, paradigm su su soi se okay you your uh, to you and you okay se you okay meaning the father and uh, says over here tan manan okay the only okay manan you get the word you know uh, mono stereo whatever it be one speaker okay you understand what I'm saying be careful though. He wasn't denying his deity. Jesus wasn't saying, well, it doesn't say, you're the only, uh, check this out. Tell the witnesses this. Ask the witnesses this. Does it say in this text, in uh, John chapter 17, verse 3, you're the only true God, okay, and I am not. And, okay, be, Greek word Kai, I am ego eimi, ooh, not. Does it say that? It doesn't say that in any manuscript I ever saw in my life dealing with John 17, 3. New Testament Greek manuscripts on that page that has around 17 glorious lines of uh, variant readings. It doesn't say that anywhere. Just like I said, it doesn't say, okay, all right, and I hate a poyas and hate as tan lagan. In the beginning, God created the logos anywhere. Don't give me Proverbs chapter 8, okay? Don't give me that. It's a she, she, her, or she, her, her, or whatever the case may be. Cola, okay? She says, like Coca Cola, like that. The hey is, is proving that 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 word is indicating that that word is in a feminine construction. Okay, don't give me shot of it, okay? You know what I mean? That's grammatical gender, it's not actual gender. You know, I can give you, you know, um, what? Um, uh, ha cosmos, I can give you that. Does it mean that the that, that, that has to do with uh, natural gender? That's grammatical gender. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to get a sip of my coffee because I'm dealing with the witnesses. I have to get some energy. It is early in the morning, guys. It's about 6 o'clock. I mean, goodness. Let's see what time is it. Over here in the Philippines. It's, um... I got a giant size print uh, uh, clock over here. 7.36. It's not that bad. 7.36 and 45 seconds to boot. Okay, it's a Sunday, very early in the morning. And I don't know why they're still roostering. If that's not just a one, it's like, it's like a participle. Okay, so make it construction. Participial construction. <laughs> I don't know why they're roostering. You know what I'm saying? How te de estin he ionia zoe hena gonosco sense. I cheated. I put the, the end, but who cares? Tan manan alatinan teran. Okay, and I said that teran is in, in the inaugural state. So he can say God because there's no taunt there on here. Let's look at the, the similar construction, okay, in uh, in John's Gospel, okay, meaning not a similar construction, but the theon, you know that. Let's check that out. And I hear in Hologos, I Hologos in Prostan theon. You see, that's taunt theon there. Was talking about the same theon. 
Okay, talking about the same thing on, but this is in the articulate state, okay, because we're talking about two different persons here, you know, one being with another person, okay, all right, you understand what I'm saying? Okay, that's just a deal. And on the other side of the ledger, now do I have, can I, can I do this? Can I, can I, I can't though, I need, I need the same thing, I need to go back. Actually, I really need to go back over here. Just, just book the bear here anyway, and get chapter seventeen, which is actually Eos at Eota Zeta, or Zeta. Poke the bear here, and my baby is being taken care of by um, uh, her uh, grandma, so that's a good thing. Lola in uh, in uh, in Cebuano, you know, Philippine uh, dialect, you know, Cebuano, you know. That's what I said. And so it says over here, Hate de Estin, hey, I only have Zoe. Hina conozco sin. Okay, I cheated, okay. Conozco sin, say, Tom and Nana, but they're not they on. Okay? Well, actually, it's they on because of the cute, because the grab marker is on the, uh, uh, over the uh, uh, Omicron there. Now it's called Omicron. So they on is in the Anarchist state. As I look at my work there, canopy that, 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 I, that I'm trying to. You know, we're selling stuff, you know, food and stuff like that. And uh, we don't have a store yet, so I just, you know, have a little canopy up there as you hear the wind blowing it like a flag, you know. It's amazing. Greek word chi, kappa, alpha, iota, it looks like K-A-I. Okay, that can be translated and a K here. Now, I want to add this. I don't know if I added this before that there is an appendix to this. So if, if I added it um, already in the study, please forgive me for saying it again. That um, there is a, sort of an appendix uh, to this verse. I mean, um, that you sent into this world. As I sneeze. Excuse me, guys. Into this world are words that are not in the they probably were not in the original but it, it's it's in a manuscript and you see it in new testament greek manuscripts uh, uh you know the page has, that deals with john chapter 17 verse 3 there is a variant reading that's extra there's an extra set of words you know what i'm saying that you sent into this world jesus christ who now has sent into this world so into you know the greek word ace is there in the extra appendix, uh, in the in the appendix, I should say, and then um, and then uh, probably Tan uh, Cosmon, and he gives it the case construction for you know what? Okay, I don't think it was um, in the in the data. If I think it was in the accusative case construction, which is the case of limitation. Now let me let me break up the cases. Let me let me uh, set them forth. Okay. Because this is very, very important. Because a lot of people say, oh, accusative case, nominative case, dative case, genitive case. In the older days, it would be instrumental case and ablative case and locative case and stuff like that. You know, the vocative case or the vocative case. But what are these cases? So when you see, you know, all these cases, you know, um, you know, subject, the, the subject nominative, you know. I was dealing with uh, some junctive, so it's kind of, you know, hard to switch. From just subjunctives to uh, the subject uh, nominative, okay, kind of sounds the same. But what are these cases and stuff like that? Now, now I see how T is in the nominative case, right? And then, um, uh, hey, Ionios, and it's kind of strange. Ionios is like Hadas, it's like a third declension ending, uh, what? Ending in O, and it's still feminine. That's a kind of, it's kind of strange. You know, it's a strange thing. I, I call it a strange thing. It's just, you know, it's not the norm. And then you got uh, Zoe is in the nominative case, construction. Okay? So you got nominative, nominative, nominative there. And then you have, uh, let me see. And then you have Se, meaning you, in the accusative case. What's that? And then Tom Manan, those are in the accusative case constructions, the article included. And then, um... Alethinan, that's in the accusative case. Theon, that's in the accusative case. Han, which is a relative pronoun. It means, you know, he, because it's, it's, it's you know, it's, um, it's, um, um, you could say who, you could say who, right? Not who, interrogative, you have tiff for that. A tisket, a tasket. You, you, you heard that song before? Uh, you know, Abbott Costello, the, the lady, the little girl singing Abbott Costello and stuff like that, you know, whatever. So, this is an accusative case, or that's an accusative case. Apostelos, uh, okay, 
Well, that's a verb sent, okay? And then you have Yesun Kristan. I mean, that's an accusative. Those are those are those words are in the accusative case. So you have a whole bunch of words, okay, that are in the accusative case construction. Let's de deal since this is front and center. Actually, these uh, uh, two cases are front and center over here, and I don't see any other case here. I only see, okay, something in the um, accusative case. A whole bunch of things in the, in the accusative case and a whole bunch of stuff in the nominative case. So let's deal with nominative first. So it's kind of easy. Okay. What is the nominative case? Well, the nominative case has to do with designation. It's not primarily the, the naming case, says Manti in his manual. That has to do with the with, at times with the subject of the sentence. And I say at times because then in Hebrews 1a will be translated correctly by the witnesses if you say that's the subject of the sentence all the time. It's not the subject of the sentence all the time. Okay. Now in the case is, I'll give you an example. God is love. Well, the word God will be theos is in a nominative case. Don't say nominative. Nominative. The nominative case. Hello. The baby okay, Ma? Okay. Oh. Well, Papa. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Um, so the thing is that, uh, so that's the, that's the nominative case. The nominative, the nominative case has to do with, uh, okay, well, has to do with, uh, designation. Okay. And, and in that situation where you say, um, the father loves the son or God is love, we're talking, you're talking about the subject nominative because God, okay, the father is the subject of the verb in those two cases, in those two situations. Okay. When you say Angelo is going to the store, Angelo in Greek will be in a nominative case. Or you're going to have to, you know, you have the stem for Angelo, Angela, right? That's my name, Angelo. So in the Greek it will be Angela. And then what you do, if it's in the singular, you add an S to the root of the word, and then you have Angelas, and that's how you form the nominative case in that situation. Okay? All right. So, so the thing is, so, so you have that. So it's just, and you have a different kind of uh, nominative. You have uh, nominative of exclamation, uh, the nominative of appellation. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, you have different nominatives. It's not as rich as the genitive. The genitive is very rich. It's like a rich case. It has a different uses than, you know, uh, the genitive has to do with uh, description, definition, or attribution. Okay? Sometimes possession. You have different you have different situations for that different uses under the umbrella of the genitive you have the the genitive of time you know Nicodemus came to Jesus by night the genitive of time genitive of place Luke chapter uh, 16 okay uh, the genitive of relationship and you have a wonderful uh, one uh, example there in a, in a manual Greek grammar of the Greek New Testament by uh, Manti uh, Jesus to Mary but then it it really doesn't mean, um, you know, um, that 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 article, I believe it's ha, I don't have it in front of me, it has to do with Mary. You have to introduce there or insert there in your English translation or whatever the case may be, Jesus the son of Mary, you see? Because ha doesn't have to do with Mary in the Greek there, okay? Um, so you just inter you just add, an, uh, add a, a noun there, Jesus the son of Mary, and I think that's the genesis of a relationship. So all these cases have several uses, except for on um, the vocative case or the vocative case that has to do with direct address. Okay. So let me just spit out the cases very quickly. Okay. So you have the nominative case that has to do with designation. You know, God is love, right? And he'll be in a nominative case. God, he's the subject of the love. You know, Ashton. And then you have the genitive case. So that's a nominative because then you have the genitive case that has to do with description. Okay. Um, the heart of unbelief. Okay. What kind of what kind of a, what kind of a heart that is? So it's the heart of unbelief. It's describing what kind of heart that is. You see. Jesus, the Son of God. Well, He's the Son of God. Is limiting what kind of a son He is. Okay. What kind of a son? Well, He's the Son of God. Now, and then you have the vocative case, uh, you know, um, uh, te mu te Okay. Uh,
Let me pause because the canopy broke. So I gotta have to. I have to uh, fix that canopy. Yeah, sorry guys. Well, this is a very, very long study. Okay, <laughs> some kids entered into the house. Okay, and I just offer them some juice. Well, anyway, I mean, listen. We were talking about the different cases in Greek. Now you got the nominative case that has to do with designation. The genitive case that has to do with description, right? Attribution, definition, like that. The vocative case, which has to do with direct address, when someone is speaking to somebody, right? And I was using the uh, emu, the emu, what Jesus said on the cross, that, that incredible statement, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Well, one of the gospels says the emu, the emu. I think another one says the osmo, the osmo, right? Well, that's evocative, and then you get to the dative case. The dative case has to do with uh, interest, okay, the dative case. Okay, he lied to God. That's tote o. They ask us in a dative case. Okay. And then you have the accusative case, okay, which has to do with limitation, just like the genitive, but I shouldn't say just like the genitive, uh, um, but um, it has to do with, with extent. The extent of the hearing is limited, right? Uh, and NIV and NASB uh, corrects the mistake of the King James, and they say that they didn't understand the voice. See, you know, understanding more perfectly or translating more perfectly the accusative case in that in that case. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? The, the limited is a the case of the accusative case has to do with limitation as to extent, ex extent. And then you have the locative case, instrumental case, and the ablative case, which really are not used these days. So what did they do? Well, they blend some cases together and made applesauce out of them. Okay? So they got rid of the ablative case, which, <laughs> no pun intended, because it has to do with separation. You know, your sins have been removed from you as far as the east is from the west. Well, that's an example of the ablative case, right? The ablative case. And then there's a case of separation. And then the locative case, right? And then the instrumental case that has to do with means. Okay? So they got rid of basically three out of the eight or three out of the seven cases. And they have four or five uh, that they speak of. You know, they, they really stuck with the... Uh, they, they would love to get rid of the vocative case. They would love to get rid of that as a case. But they can't. Exactly. They can't really get rid of it. You understand what I'm saying? I can see my canopy goes up, go, go up and smoke. I think that the stick broke. You know, it's a bad day to actually fix this canopy. It really is. It's incredible. You know. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna. I'm just gonna make a store. You know, make a, a good 12 by 12 foot store. I guess like something like that, or like a 10 by foot store. You have to cheat. You have to say 11 by 11, and they give you 10 by 10. You know, because then the blocks really don't count. Uh, really inwardly for space like that. So you have to say 11 by 11, and then, then hopefully they'll give you 10 by 10. You know, like that. You know, I want it um, 20 by um, 15. And I got like, uh, I don't know, I think I got like 19 by 13. So, I mean, I'm just going to cheat the next time. I'm just going to cheat. You know, that's just a thing. Just like, like I cheated with Konosko uh, uh, Sensei. It's not a new here, but I, but I recite the other manuscript that has Konosko Sin. And I just put it in this text. It's just like saying um, in Hebrew of John 1.1, 1, 1, um, Bereshit hayahadabar, vahadabar hayaim, see im. That's in the, in the 1817 uh, Hebrew edition, not in the, the apps, you know, it's something else. Um, with, so it's not that with, that preposition is not, you know, um, it's not in, I don't know if I didn't it again, because there's another preposition in all, all the manuscripts, you know, that has to do with the, the, the Hebrew New Testament. Well, I mean, so you got different cases and stuff like that, and, and what you do, in most situations, okay, you just add a, a letter to the end of the root of the word, and then then you then then you you know, 
you put a, a, a word in a particular case. Okay? And that's just a deal. So if you want to say um, that he was with God, okay, well then instead of, you know, he was with Hathayas, you put Tantayan, because he's with him, okay, and he's with another person, right? So you change that. Because, as, you know, because tantean there is not the subject of the verb. It's not the subject of the, of the sentence. Okay? So you have to put that in the accusative case. He, he's limited to being with him only. And so you're limiting, you're, you're, you're limiting the relationship, basically, in theology. If you want to um, come out of the realms of, of Greek and, and, and teach it in theological terms, you're limiting the, the intercommunion, uh, um, the, the, um, intercommunion uh, relationship. You're, you're limiting it to uh, Lagos and Dios. Okay, you're limiting it to Him. Okay? And the Holy Spirit is in the background, of course, uh, in the text. And remember, He shall glorify me, said Jesus. He's not going to glorify Himself. He's not going to speak of Himself. Remember that the Gospel is mainly about the Father and the Son. Okay? Their relationship and, and their um, work in salvation. Okay? The Father giving the gift of the Son and the son uh, making a sacrifice for uh, his elect people. Romans chapter 9. Well, those are the cases. I mean, so, and you have, um, and you have uh, uh, two cases here. Zoe, which means life, that's in the nominative case. Okay. All right. And then you have, uh, and then you have, um, And then you have uh, an example for the accusative case construction, Theon. So you have two cases here. I don't see any other case here. I mean, uh, Yesun, I mean, for Jesus, you know the paradigm, you know, uh, Yesu, Yesu, Yesu. Yesun. So you have, you know, you have, you know, um, one construction um, shared by two cases, you know, Yesu. Um, that could be a genitive, um, right? And that could be. Um, that's the construction for the genitive and for the dative case. Okay? There's no such paradigm as, you know, Jesus, Yesu, Yeso, and yes, Yesun. I mean, you know, this is, you know. So that's an accusative case. Okay? The only true God. The only true God. And that's why we have to tell the witnesses that, um, that this might be talking about the both persons here. That they're the only true God. At least Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 10 says that the Lord is the true God. And Jesus is designated anyway as the true God. According to the witnesses in 1 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 6. Which we'll, we, we'll, we'll get to in our next study. This angel of Kenyon has given glory to God the Father, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And it means that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are very, very much alive. And, but uh, apart from that, that means that uh, the, the Watchtower lied to it, its own people by saying to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we're going to return, it's not even a B, it's a B, it's, it's, was gonna, we're going to return okay, to California of all places. I mean, goodness gracious. I mean, I, I like Nancy Pelosi, but Nancy, but, but, uh, but, but, but California? I mean, they couldn't, they couldn't come to Yankee territory in New York, even though they got bounced, you know, in 2021 by, uh, by Boston of all, of all teams. Okay? You know, my stepdaughter said to me, asked me yesterday, why do you hate Boston? <laughs> you got to be joking. Okay? Why do I hate Boston? It's like, why do, you, why do you like bacon and eggs? You know what I'm saying? It just tastes good. Why do you hate Boston? You know, really not Boston, though, but the Sox. And then she said, why the Sox? Well, well, why do you call them Boston Red Sox? Because they have Red Sox, Mayor. I mean, goodness gracious. Get with the program, you know what I'm saying? I'm looking at my canopy. It's still holding out a little bit anyway. All right, I mean, this, this, this is just a deal. I mean, that's just it. So anyway, uh, but I got to check out my canopy, guys. It's just ridiculous until I get to store. I mean, you know, was, you know, 11 by 11 or 12 by 12 or whatever. And now we have a little tiny, you know, a canopy made of paper <laughs> and some sticks on the table, whatever the case may be, holding that thing together with spit and glue. And the way it's like a typhoon. It's incredible.
So what did we learn? I mean, listen, to finish the study, we learned that the Father is the true God. And to know uh, eternal life is to know Him and the Son. But since He is the true God, Jesus is the true God. I mean, there's different opinions about that. But he, since He's called the true God, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 20, anyway, well, He's the true God over here. And it's a connecting word. Kai didn't say, okay, uh, ego Amy, um, oh, uh, the true God, right? Tam Anan, Tantean, or Tam Anan, Altenan, Athean. I'm not the true God. Doesn't say that. He didn't say that. He didn't deny his deity. Didn't deny it at all. So, there's another scenario that you could give to the witnesses, and I gave you another scenario uh, that, that doesn't exist in John 1, 1, A, Alpha, I call it. And I hear a poison, hate as tan lagan. Just to borrow a few words from the famous of us in, in Greek, you know, and I hear a poison, hate as tan uranan kaitain gain. In the beginning, okay, all right, God created the heavens and the earth. There's no similar construction in John 1, 1, that he created the Logos. Not there. My coffee is cold, by the way. I mean, this is insane. Well, we learned um, the cases of the Greek. We said that the, that the, that the nominative case has to do with designation. It, has to, it, can, it can be the subject of the sentence. can be. You have to be careful with that because a similar construction appears in Hebrews 1.8. Like I said before, how they ask, it's not even the subject of the sentence. Okay. Thronos is the subject of the sentence there. There's no verb, you know. So I can't say sub subject of the verb. There's no verb. There is. So we have to apply that in your translation. Okay, so we have a nominative, you know, a subject nominative, you know. For the, for the Father loves the Son. Who's doing the action of, of loving the Son, the Father. So he's in the subjective case in English and a nominative case in Greek. So we learned that. We learned about the genitive case, you know, what kind of a heart, you know. And I'll even add this. Has um, um, What kind of a form is it? What was the form of God? Teu. See how the construction changed from Tea. Uh, tea to uh, Teu. See the construction of God? Not merely just God, but of God. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And so that's the deal. And so the thing is that so we saw that genitive case has to do with uh, description, uh, what kind of whatever, okay. And so we saw the vocative case that has to do with direct address, you know. And we we saw an example of theemu, theemu, theemu. My God, my God. Okay, he's talking to God. The son is talking to God. The theemu. So the construction changes from theos to the okay? You know what I'm saying? I don't know how that canopy is going to hold out. I'm just afraid. That's just, <laughs> and so, you know, nominative, um, genitive, and, and vocative. And, and then we saw uh, a case of, uh, the case of I'm sorry, uh, um, interest, the dative case. Okay? He lied to God, you see? One of the magic, I hate to say the magic, but the, one of the magic words, keywords for the date of case, you know, do. He loved, he liked do God. See? Do teo. You see how the construction changed from teos to teo. And the case ending there is Yoda. It's not Omega, it's Yoda. Subscripted underneath, you know, uh, that. Let's check that out for a second, though. Okay, so let's go to a Praxis Apostle on the Actually a Passage. And that's just that deal. So let's go to the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. Okay, so that's like what? Um, that's uh, Epsilon. And let's check out... Uh, da, 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 da. That's like... Um, verse 4. Okay. You see Penuma there in a capital. In capital letters. Wonderful. Capital Penuma, see? Capital P there. Penuma, which means spirit. Um, so where is four though? Four is right here, and I'm looking. I want to look at Toteo. 
I'm gonna say what I'm saying. And it's right over here. See? It says over here that they lied to. Okay. You have not lied to anthro anthropois, which is that's in the uh, uh, plural. Anthropois, the men. Okay, that's in the dative case also. But Allah, right? Alpha Landa Landa Alpha, the God. You see how the word God is right before on um, the five. They all there. You see that little tiny I underneath a W looking letter, which is not a W, it's an O. It's one of the O's in Greek Omega, which has the value of 800, I believe. Okay? Parakisma, which actually was the last uh, letter in the Greek alphabet in classic times, what had a value of 900. That was the actual last letter, Parakisma. Okay? Around three letters were dropped off that I know of, Parakisma being one of them. It had to do with pregnancy. So thank God it was dropped off. Okay. This is, uh, he lied, uh, he lied, but you haven't lied to men, but to God. Now, I, 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 it says over here, epsu, epsuso. Okay, that's uh, the word lie right there. Okay. And, and then it says over here, anthropois, uh, lie to, to men. But to God, so they lied to God. Um, Ananias and Sapphira, that 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 wife and husband uh, combination. Okay, they lied to God. So they all is there. Um, and see the construction, how it changed there. Okay, Omega swallowed the Omicron, and Iota is written underneath the Omega there, the the the, the Omega there, and that happens in three situations uh, in Greek. The little tiny I can be written underneath three vowels: Omega, Alpha, and Eta. And so you have that right there. Uh, they all. So that's an adative case. They lie to God. That's an adative. And then we saw the accusative case uh, construction, you know, Atan, Theon, and John 1 B. Atan, Manan, Alatheon, Theon, and John 17 3. And that's just a deal. So you saw the accusative case. And then we mentioned the ablative case and the instrumental case and the locative case uh, just as a novelty. But it's good to know those cases, and they don't teach them in college sometimes, but it's good to know those cases because if you're going to see them in a book, the ablative case was that. You know, that has to do with separation. And so it's good to know those, those, those cases um, that were written in, in a book like Mantis. Um, it's just good to know them, you know. If you're reading old books, it's good to know, you know, those particular cases well anyway guys parting is such sweet sorrow all right and that's just your deal and, and so um so when you're dealing with the witnesses it's good to know this is the last release study of john 17 3 we're gonna head into um uh first corinthians chapter 8 verse 6 and, and look at the and we already looked at it but we'll look at it again god willing look at the, the you know um one god and one lord scenario why why that was written Okay, and uh, wh why was it even written in the first place? Okay, it's a dead giveaway in verse 5. But why was that even written in the first place? Why does it have to be, okay, uh, why do they have to be designated in that way? And I'm going to be telling you that it ransacks all of the demigods. It ransacks them all, whether they be called God or Lord. This is Angelo Quinones giving glory to God the Father, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And I was saying that, you know, they said that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were going to return. Um, and I said they were going to return to California? <laughs> Why not New York? So, that, I mean, it's just another lie by the Watchtower and Bible Track Society by Jehovah's Witnesses saying that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were going to return. And they never did. Okay? They never did return. And then they made a mansion called Beth Serim, House of the Princes. For Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they never returned, but the president was there, living in that house like a fat cat with two Cadillacs, okay, two cars. So I guess Abraham couldn't drive, you know, out of the three. So they had two cars, you know. And so that's just the deal. Everybody else was eating out of the garbage can, and then, our, you know, Joseph Franklin Rutherford was living in that mansion that was supposed to be for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, so why he had to live in it? You know? I mean, they had to fumigate the place anyway if, uh, if they were going to return, you know. So that's just, 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 just a deal. Well, well take care, guys. Um, nice study so far. Uh, praise God for that. 
And uh, I'll be back with 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6, verse 5 and 6, uh, next time in my study. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.